Take a deep breath. And relax. Become present to the here and now. Present to the fact that you exist. Spend a little bit of time scanning your body with your awareness. If you notice any tension or distortion, or just relax it. Maybe penetrate it with your awareness, with love, with light. Burst through the cells, increase the vibrancy, the density of light in between and within all the cells. Now view the body as a whole. It's a single field. Functioning as the extension of your self. And then notice for a moment that all of this, all of the senses, all of what you perceive exists inside your awareness. You don't know of anything outside of it. You don't know of anything beyond it. Notice how the sounds don't happen to awareness, they happen in awareness.
So to your thoughts, they don't happen to consciousness. They arise in consciousness. See if you can get a sense for that difference. The sense of perceptions being in your awareness. The world occurring in sight and therefore as awareness. I notice that this awareness, which hears my voice, is already naturally inclusive of any sound, any sensation, any thought. There's a wholeness to it that's already there. This moment is already embraced. You don't have to accept or reject it. You can accept it, but it doesn't change anything. You can reject it, but it doesn't change anything to the fact that it's already happening in your awareness and it's already allowed to be exactly as it is. So your naturally all-inclusive state of being, which includes the sounds, the thoughts, the feelings, the memories, the desires, all of it is already included. There's nothing that is known outside or a part of your beingness, your awareness, your I am. So then isn't everything already approved? Isn't everything already accepted, whole, perfect, okay, fine, present, embraced, loved, included? Everything is already transparent to what you are and you are already transparent to whatever is. There's no separation between what is known and the knower. Every time you try to separate what you know out of the knower, you fail. And yet we relate to the known objects and perceptions that we relate to. We relate to them as if they are objects. As if they are threats that exist outside of our beingness that we then have to accept or reject, judge right or wrong, include or exclude and so forth. But anything that appears is instantaneously accepted by existence as it is. You have no say in the matter. So even the practice of acceptance is ultimately a fallacy. It's more effective to practice the recognition that everything is already accepted exactly the way that it is, with or without your approval, with or without your personality's preferences lined up to it. Right now, this sensation of being here, try to reject it. Does it stop existing? Right now, the sense of being here and hearing my voice, did you need to accept it before it appeared? before it existed, before it was known in the knower. It is spontaneously appearing. God already approved its existence or it would not exist. So much more direct way to acceptance is to realize that the nature of all perception is already accepted, is the fact that it's already accepted or it wouldn't appear. 
This can generate a real sense of inclusiveness, of inseparability with your environment, with your thoughts, with your emotions, with your world. Because you realize, hey, this is happening inside of me. This is actually literally appearing inside of awareness. My innermost sense of what I am. That which knows, that which is. I cannot find a perception, a tree, a feeling, an emotion, a memory, the sky. I cannot find it to exist apart from me being aware of it. Then you realize you've never had an experience that existed or appeared or could be proven to exist outside of your awareness. You've never had such an experience. Every moment, all you know is your awareness colored in with different shapes and sizes and labels, names, and ideas. But it's always here now. And everything is the product of consciousness. Everything that's known is the result of your being is there, you being first. I am, therefore this is, this appears, this is known. Maybe nothing actually exists outside of the knowing of it. Maybe the knowing of it is as far as it goes. Just maybe. We don't know, you can't say can only say what you know and what you know is only what you know you don't know that it is you just know that you know it and that knowing of it is within the dimension or domain of I am aware you could add of this but the basis of it is awareness just like the dream at night the basis of it is the dreamer, is the mind, is consciousness. There's no reality to what you think is real when you're dreaming. It's only existence is as being known. Being known is the extent of its existence. So anything that it comes up for you in your life, you can just relax with as it is. You can rest with it exactly as it appears. You don't need to alter it. You don't have to accept it or reject it. You just rest with it exactly as it is. You acknowledge it exactly as it is. You relax it exactly as it is. Allowing this perception to be the field of the knower, the field of awareness, the field of I am. And you can tap into a real soothing experience a really nourishing sense of yourself, of the whole of it, the totality of life contained in excess as I am. So if you notice a mountain in the distance, just rest as the mountain. If you hear the sound of a frog, you rest as the sound of a frog. If you notice irritation about the sound of the frog, you rest as the irritation of the sound of the frog. If you feel comfortable, you rest as the comfort. If you feel uncomfortable, you rest as the discomfort, as it appears perfectly as it is beyond being accepted or rejected, it just appears in consciousness. Its nature, its basis is awareness. So you can rest as awareness with anything that is known. You can rest as this chair, you can rest as your feelings, you can rest as the emotion that occurs. You can just be at rest with whatever appears exactly as it arises, exactly as it is with no need to replace it, avoid it, accept it, change it, fix it, 
without the need to make it dissolve, without the need to sustain it or keep it there. It's the art of just being with what is exactly as it is. No addition, no subtraction, no alteration, essentially no preference. Or if there's a preference, you rest with the preference exactly as it is, not indulging the preference, just resting with it as it is. So there's a difference between indulging your perceptions, indulging your thoughts, indulging your emotional energies versus resting as them. Resting, you could say with them, if as is too mysterious at this point. But basically, awareness is the perception it's having and the perception is the awareness. There is no actual distinction in its essence because the perception is made of the knowing of it. So that clarity, that awareness is the basis of all perception, of all that you've ever known. Therefore, when you rest with a turbulent feeling, you're actually resting as pure awareness. Unless you're indulging the thought form that suggests you need to accept or reject, alter or replace, fix. Unless you call it imperfect and you actually indulge that thought that it is imperfect, you believe it. But you don't even have to indulge the thought, it's imperfect as it is. That too is perfectly accepted as it appears. The nature of reality does not argue with itself exactly as it is. It's optional to do so and to believe in that. So learn to rest with things exactly as they are, not replacing, not avoiding, not sustaining, not rejecting, not accepting. You need to become very, very, very small to be able to do that. The ego needs to shrink. Your arrogance, your righteousness needs to shrink all the way to zero. When you reach zero, life is experienced exactly as it is. Buddha called this suchness. You can't describe it, you can't label it, you can't name it, you can't put it in a box. You can only be it as exactly as it is. There's a great power in that moment of zero, in that moment of awake, alive, cognizant zero, where you align to the acceptance that is the nature of reality. You don't accept anything. You're aligning to the nature of this moment. There is no evidence that this moment is not accepted exactly the way that it is. You just align to that truth, to that simple observation. The indisputable fact that this is happening. Therefore, it's accepted. Even the feelings you have about it being wrong, they arise, so it's accepted. Now, philosophically, you could say, just for fun, God already approved of this manifestation or this manifestation would not be allowed to appear. So it's out of your hands. It's not your job to accept or reject. So you come to that naturally restful state that's already here. And you realize there is no need to argue with anything. I can be in this powerful state of confidence where I actually know I don't need to argue with anything. That even when I'm arguing with something, I don't have to argue with that. Even when I don't accept life as it is, I don't have to accept that or reject it either way. It is exactly as it appears to be. You allow that to be it. And there's a great freedom, a great sort of transcendental understanding of yourself, state of being that emerges 
from the depths of your own existence. When you stop interacting with life, interacting as in changing this, replacing that, fixing such, accepting, rejecting, that type of interaction, when all interaction ceases, you still exist. That is awakening to the natural state. In that moment, experientially, an awakening emerges. When you stop interacting with life, because interacting is based on alteration, it's based on acceptance, rejection, and it obscures us from the natural state of acceptance. That's already the case. The perfection of life as it is. So if just for a moment you stop doing what you call interacting with life, which means, okay, there's thoughts appearing, but I'm not indulging them. I'm not even going for any of it. I'm not even trying to alter any of it. I don't even believe in the thoughts that occur. So a different way of saying stop interacting with your life as you know it would be stop believing in anything that appears. Just allow it to be as it is. Don't indulge it. Just be at zero. Be perfectly present at zero. Letting everything be exactly as it is. Exactly. Just exactly. And it flows. It doesn't stay static. So allow the change to be exactly the change that it is. But be present to every moment. Accepting even whatever discomfort or contraction arises in the trying out of this practice. Just noting things as they are, noting them. Oh, a perception, note it. Oh, a sensation, acknowledged. Oh, a thought, acknowledged. Oh, the sound of the wind, acknowledged. And you kind of speed that up, which slows you down. If you keep acknowledging everything exactly as it appears to you, you shrink. You as the thinker, as the ego shrinks. Alternatively, if you, you shrink, if you become quiet, your, the clarity of your perception amps up, speeds up. But if you keep noticing, noting this, 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 now this, now this, now this, then there is no room for indulging. Your only job in that moment is to note things exactly as they are. If you do it fast enough, there is no room for you to enter into any position about anything. So you can also do it that way. Just keep noting, keep making very brief mental notes of what you notice. This, that sensation, this. You keep at it, don't think about it. Sound, sight, color, sound, sight, sensation, thought, feeling, awareness of Bentinho speaking, sensation in my throat, clearing. My hair dancing in the wind. I thought about the sky existing. The feeling of being present here. I feel my body sitting in the chair. I notice my lungs are breathing in and out. I notice more thoughts arising. I notice the sound of the bird. If you keep that up, there's no room for you to enter into any position about anything. You can't indulge. You can't interact with it. You're allowing it. You're learning to recognize it exactly as it is and enter into that timeless state of total acceptance, which is already the natural condition of this moment. You just think you have the right to accept or reject, but you don't. That ability to try to accept or reject doesn't change a single thing. It just alters your interior experience about what is, but that too is as it is you. You're too late. Trying to accept what is, you're too late. It's already accepted or it wouldn't be there. So the art of accepting or resisting is too late. You have no say in the matter. If it is, it is. Shall I accept this or reject this? Shall I approve of it, include it, or shall I resist it? You're too late. You can't resist what is. It still is. You can't accept what is. It already is. So it's that quantum leap beyond the practice of acceptance 
Now, it's still a practice. Don't get me wrong. It's not just something that you think once and then you got it forever. Very unlikely. So it's still a practice, but it's the quantum version of the practice of accept everything as it is. Is the recognition, practice the recognition that's already accepted as it is and that it's beyond your say. It's more powerful that way, more direct. It undermines the whole linear process of trying to accept things as they are. It's not a process. It's a recognition of the nature of reality. And then there's a great peace there that emerges, great clarity that emerges, great stability that reveals itself to already be the case. Life is stable as fuck. Have you noticed? Life itself is stable as fuck. It's persisted for as long as we know. It is, it is, it is, it is. You know, you meditate for one minute and you're proud of yourself. But life's been doing this for eternity. Eternal presence. Stable as fuck. So why not align to the way it already is? So you too become stable as fuck. Practice it when your emotions get turbulent. Turbulent emotions, resistance, pain, grief, projections onto others, fear of loss, physical pain. In that moment, just pause for two to five seconds and recognize that it's beyond your indulgence. It just is the way that it is. You don't have to accept it. It can hurt as a motherfucker and you cannot like it at all. That too is just as present as the wind blowing through the leaves. There is no distinction from God's eyes. That's why God doesn't judge us because it sees everything with the same essence, the same evenness, the same equanimity. God is stable as fuck. God is exist, begins to emerge to you as the fact that I exist. Awareness, lucid awareness of the fact that you are. It's that little backdoor portal that opens into the knowledge of the Creator. Everything's already accepted from that vantage point. So just enjoy that. Enjoy the freedom of seeing that it doesn't matter if you accept or reject. Still practice being present to that fact. Otherwise, you just go back into automatic default mode. It's still a practice, but it's a more formless version. It's a quantum version of you as a person accepting what is. Just go beyond that. Undermine the whole person, subject, object duality and go straight to the heart of it. Life already is. I can't accept or reject. When you see, when you recognize that you cannot accept or reject life, it's beyond that. Then you align to that which is beyond it. You become stable as fuck. This is where peace is found. True peace exists in aligning to life as it is. Not being in your head about it. Not being proud of accepting it or being frustrated about rejecting it or resisting it. It's beyond that. The natural state is already beyond acceptance or rejection. So what does that leave for you to do about it? Nothing. It's a recognition. It's a realization. It's an awakening. It's not a doing. It's a realization. And then you align to that. You become transparent to it. You think source has any problems with what is right now? Just align to that realization. It's a much faster route than 
assuming yourself to be a person that has the right to accept or reject that which so evidently already has been approved by God. So just, again, stop playing that game. Get, admit defeat to the game. I can never accept or reject anything. I can generate the illusion of that game, but it doesn't change shit. It doesn't mean anything. It's righteous. I'm in my head about it. I think it's up to me whether I accept or resist something. It's not. It's already here. Some guy in the sky already gave his stamp for it. Already approved it. Already said, mm, yep, this potential is allowed to manifest right now. Boop. And then you come in. Mm, shall I accept that? Shall I resist it? Shall I form beliefs about it? Shall I argue with it? Do I know better than the man in the sky? <laughs> We're testing your resolve here. How much have you transcended that image so you can re-include it and still know what I mean without distraction? It's kind of like that guy on Nick's shirt. Bruce Lee is the God DJ. Produces this music. And then you go and like, well, I shouldn't have played that. Well, it's here. It is as it is. So go beyond the duality of the practice of acceptance. Go straight to the oneness of it, straight to the reality of it. Make sense? Yeah. Cool, huh? It's a little, a little shortcut in a way. You still have to practice it though, huh? This is the problem with quantum, quantum versions of certain practices that are understood by people is they kind of get it for a moment and the effect is so potent that it releases them from doing that former activity but then it doesn't stick because they don't practice it because it's so abstract or formless. So you really kind of have to keep recognizing this, make this a practice for a while. It was one of the most powerful things I ever realized that it's already accepted. That quantum leap, my whole acceptance of life as it is. It's much more powerful, but it's still something you got to touch base with. And you got to do it also when emotions get high. It's when it's especially powerful. Because it's really, it's where it's especially powerful is when your emotions are all tied up, your panties are all in a knot. Is because then it's really hard to accept it as it is, isn't it? When life seems to be really hard, really difficult to accept as it is, What's easy is to recognize that it's already accepted. Which includes you disliking the situation. It includes that. So this real acceptance includes your non-acceptance of what's already accepted by God. You see that? Because that's part of the appearance. There's a tree over here. There's a table. There's a chair. Oh, and there is also evenly to all that. There's the chair. There's the tree, there's the sky, there's the birds, and there's me resisting life as it is. No different. It's not more personal than the tree in the distance. It's just another perception. It's just another form that what is takes for that moment. So that too is already accepted. The fact that you have difficulty accepting your life as it is, that is already accepted. So you transcend the whole dual game. You stop playing the chess game of trying to accept or reject. It's just the way it is. Then you are actually aligning to source the way that God sees it. Very powerful. But you still got to align to that. You still got to catch yourself when you're indulging in the resistance or even in the attempt to accept. Undermine it. Go beyond it. Go underneath that. Go one leap, level deeper. It's already accepted. All right, take a deep breath. Let loose with a nice little audible sigh. 